everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance, and this is the last stream of the week. Sad. Like, officially, this is the last one. Oh, this is it? This is it. Ooh, it better be good then. Yeah, <laughs> how do you feel about being kind of the, the caboose of this train? It's a lot of responsibility. It is. I feel like Spider-Man. Feel like Spider-Man, that's good. And chat, <laughs> if you've been watching Mark's streams, this is Mark, by the way, Mark Uzbiani is here with me. If you've been watching his streams for the last couple days, you know he is worthy of this honor because he, you're more like the Flash. You work real fast. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess. Uh, chat, say hello. Let us know if this is your first time being here or if uh, you are a veteran chatter, watcher. If you are just turning in for the first time, we do have a challenge for you that this is the last opportunity for you to win. So we want you to make an illustration based off of the idea of movement. And we also have another tenant to this challenge where we want you to only use three colors. We have them all provided for you at be.net slash live. Learn more about that there. We'll also do a giveaway an hour in, but we'll chat about that in a little bit. First, let's let Mark introduce himself and I'll show a little bit of his lovely work while he does so. <laughs> so I'm Mark Usmiani. Uh, I'm a freelance illustrator and I primarily do a lot of like old school video game kind of stuff using vector art. So I'm really heavily inspired from games like Legend of Zelda or really old Bioware games like Baldur's Gate. Uh, <laughs> and I draw a lot of inspiration from anime and other movies. Tamagotchi yep. amulet. <laughs> That's awesome. I was definitely a 90s kid. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. There we go. So cool. And you studied in? I studied illustration mm -hmm. at Rhode Island School of Design. There you go. So any other RISD kids out there? How's it going? Let us know. <laughs> if you didn't go to RISD and you did go to an art school, let us know where you went. Or if you didn't go to an art school, let us know anyways. Or if you're self-taught, let us know that too. Yeah. Why not? What's up, Richa, in the chat? We got Laron, Mikkel, Anna. Thank you all for being here <laughs> so much. And maybe before we dive too deep into what you're going to work on today, mm -hmm. you could look at what we worked on yesterday. Do you oh, have yeah. that on your computer? Sure thing. Perfect. So this is what we worked on yesterday. There he is. A uh, really uh, rambunctious kind of punk dude yeah. with his uh, giant pet dog. Such a doof. <laughs> Love it. All right. Cool. cool. So the first day you did a weapon. Second yes. day you did character design. And, and today, today I'm going to do an environment. I ah. think I'm going to do like a little bar house or coffee house kind mm -hmm. of place. Yeah. And maybe throw in some fantasy elements and some elements of uh, San Francisco architecture. Because <laughs> hey. that's where we are. That is where we are. And we'll pop over to my computer again real quick just so I can show you some of Mark's past places work. So past <laughs> environments. And I'm actually really impressed and inspired by this because I feel like for a lot of illustrators, it's tough to put our, our characters in context mm -hmm. or make a full background or environment for them. And it looks like you know what you're doing. <laughs> so let's see what you can whip out. All right. So I'm going to start with the background. Get a nice color going. Ooh, green this time. Yeah, I think I'm going to do kind of like a very lime green. Ah. Uh, kind of like... High planes, almost. Cool. There are some definite oh, high planes sorry. in San Francisco, some hills, <laughs> nice green hills. And they always surprise you. They like pop out from between skyscrapers. And you're like, oh, <laughs> where'd you come from, nature? My friend was driving me around on Tuesday night, mm -hmm. and I thought we were going to drive off a cliff, but <laughs> it was just another really sharp hill. Yeah. I was so scared. Dude, so <laughs> scary. I'm like. I've, I haven't actually really driven downtown San Francisco because mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't need this stress. <laughs> this is terrifying. Not only are the drivers crazy, but the streets are actually crazy too. Uh, Anna says, love the color combination already. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Jose? Thanks for being here. One of our faithful chatters. Vicky's here. Hello, hello. Let us know if you have uh, tuned into Mark's streams previously. Mark has also streamed on Twitch a couple times. Yeah. But never with a face cam or a microphone. I try to be online almost every Friday on Twitch. Cool. There you go. So if you can't get enough with the Mark Uzmiani live streams, there you go. 
go on over to Twitch. And someone actually just said in chat, this is like Twitch, but for designers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's a great platform. Agreed. Ooh, so a, a hole, a hole has happened. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make like a giant coffee mug as the top of the little restaurant kind Cute. of coffee place. I like that. Jose says, seeing Mark's work, it has inspired me to draw more. That's great. Yeah. I think one of your really cool talents is you make it look really easy. <laughs> like these tools are complex and they can be your master. So you definitely make it look easy. Anaga says, wow, you are fast, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. I told you, chat. Juan, good to have you here. Thank you. Patricia says, hi, enjoy your work. Oh, thanks. Thanks for being here, Patricia. Keep the compliments coming. <laughs> this is Mark's last stream. So you started with green. Mm -hmm. Just to get a nice background color, and yeah. then I'm trying to use other colors that would complement it very right. well. And you know that classic like glass color is that light blue, but you're even using that greenish blue to reflect mm -hmm. a little bit of the, the background behind it. Yeah. <laughs> Mark be like, zoop, zoop, zoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark zoops a lot. <laughs> she says very that. speedy. Yeah, <laughs> gotta go fast. She said that would take me like 15 minutes. Uh, Florian says, why Photoshop and not Illustrator? This is Illustrator, actually. Yeah. Oh, I know you yeah. can pretty much do the same stuff in Photoshop. Like, uh, you have the pen tool and all that. Uh, I just kind of learned using Illustrator, and I feel really comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, as, well, what's that saying? No wrong way to cook an egg or something like that? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not good with words. Yeah, that could be it. <laughs> I like to say there's many ways to skin a cat. That's the one. Gross. Ooh. Poor cat. <laughs> I know. We've got Ari in the chat. Ari is one of our awesome hosts. She was with Logan this morning. If you guys want to go check out the replay, of course, after Mark's stream, <laughs> I always recommend that people save Tuesday through Thursday for the live stream, and then on Friday over and over the weekend, you can watch the replays. <laughs> People are like, what is that saying? Ew. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty gross. Sorry. <laughs> Just being myself, y'all. And like I said at the beginning, we are going to be doing a giveaway. So today's giveaway, the first two days, were an Illustrator pillow and a Photoshop pillow. And today you get a mini version of both. We have a Photoshop, an Illustrator lapel pen. Beep, beep, beep. And you get both if you win. These are really nice. They're metal. They have nice clasps in the back so that they won't pop off your backpack, hopefully. Uh, we'll be giving those away in about 50 minutes. And I'm really jealous of that prize. Can I have a whole backpack full of pins at home. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. I've got like 30 now. Ooh, it's yeah. probably pretty heavy. Jangly. Very. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ren, who was hosting the last stream, said that she also has a vast collection. I believe it. You sound really nice. Hear that? <laughs> Low ASMR. Oh, them label pins. Yeah, Hector, you caught me. I mispronounced it one time. And now I live in a label hole. You won't let me leave it. Uh, Tatsuya, who won the last stream. Congratulations, Tatsuya. Your work has been awesome all week. Uh, he says, Mark, you seem to have this preternatural ability to compose your work on the fly. Do you ever have to sketch out your ideas or you jump straight into the finals? Um, sometimes I sketch out ideas uh, when I'm doing like the loot stuff that I've done. Right. Uh, if I'm just kind of playing around with random ideas, I do a lot of sketches of like, oh, uh, what's a really interesting object that I can just, you know, turn one way around and it'll be a weapon. Oh. Like, uh, I made one recently that was a scythe that was uh, a windmill. No way. It's not online anywhere. It's kind of where is it? Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> but I have it on my computer, and I can probably load it up sometime. Cool. At the end. Sounds good. Uh, like, I have one here that I can show off. Show it's it It's a number off. seven, but it's also an axe. What? 
it's, <laughs> what is so inspiring about the number seven? That's such a strange place to get inspired <laughs> by. I love it. Thanks. That's cool. That'd be really cool if you made like a bunch of numbers mm -hmm. into different things. I'm kind of creeping through your loot projects to see <laughs> what references I can pick out. Uh, chat if you'd like to do the same. His website is markusmiani.myportfolio.com. We also have an Instagram where you have a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, anywhere else that you would recommend people checking out your work? Uh, I'm on Tumblr. I'm on Twitter. Um, yeah, that's about it. Cool. You've got that interesting name so that it's pretty much <laughs> Marcus Miani or Marcus Miani Art everywhere. And the interesting thing about that is I have the least interesting name in my entire family. Oh, really? Yeah, I got like really boring American names. Wow. <laughs> so what's the most interesting name in your family? Uh, I gotta say my brother's confirmation name is the most interesting. Is it like six names? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he actually picked one with an X. Oh. This is uh, Zoilo. Zoilo. Yeah. How do you spell that? Nah, <laughs> you don't. It's just a noise you make with your mouth. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, Matthew, yeah, that's an Adobe portfolio page. So uh, Mark uses My Portfolio, which is a really nice portfolio service that is pretty much run through Behance. So if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you get free access to beautiful portfolio. So I'll pull Mark's up again. I'll also pull mine up so you can see kind of two different versions so this, this is a about page but I mean this looks similar to really high-end and really expensive portfolio sites that you can buy and the great um, thing is you have all your projects on Behance so it's really easy to just drag and drop yeah uh, and you can edit it down so if you want to have Behance for like the community mm -hmm. but want to have a little bit more professional style for your website yep. you can do that totally that's exactly what I do uh, so if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you have free access to My Portfolio. You can also buy just a single subscription to My Portfolio if you just want that and you don't want the rest of CC. Mm -hmm. uh, Florian says, I like the fact that you don't use gradients. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of build your gradients. Like if there is a shift in color, mm -hmm. it's literally two shapes next to each other. Is there a reason that you, stick, you stay away from them? Um, not really. Uh, well... For the most part, if you use gradients and then you want to use the eyedropper tool, it'll eyedrop the uh, gradient mm -hmm. instead of the actual color. Yep. So that got really um, troublesome yeah. at some point. So I was like, you know what? I don't need gradients. Right, like enough of this. <laughs> I'll just use really grainy textures if I need a gradient. Exactly. There's proof and of that. And if I do need uh, a gradient, then I'll just add it in right at the end. Mm-hmm. There you go. Ooh, Jose has a good question for you. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it? F how difficult was it for you or for uh, people in your community to enter the gaming industry as an illustrator? Um, it takes a while to get noticed, but yeah. a really great thing you can do is join any kind of small team on a game jam. There's like yeah. a little uh, risk for them because it's free, and you get to make something really fun over the weekend. So that's kind of how I got my start. And I'm still doing game jams, so there's a lot of fun to do. Yeah, so that's mostly to create a finished project. It's not so much to get paid, Yeah. right? Gotcha. So it's a good way to get your uh, foot in the door mm -hmm. and some practice and uh, a really nice portfolio piece. There you go. Yeah, you were showing off some game or a game that you had been working on that was really cool you did all of the visual assets for it mm -hmm. uh, Raphael says a jam is like a jam a jam is like a hackathon uh never done a hackathon but I'm guessing yeah, yeah. it's like a kind of like a charrette like just a little mini project that needs to be done in a short period of time but yeah you got it Raphael the one I usually do is the uh, ludum dare Ooh. which is uh really great because they give you a uh, theme to work on. Gotcha. So it kind of gives like this kind of uh, creative constraint to it too, mm -hmm. which is really nice. 
So do you have to attend these physically or do you do them digitally, like over Skype or something? I do them digitally. Oh, nice. Uh, I work with my friend who does animation and then the programmer I met over Tumblr and he does all the programming himself. Cool. Which is, uh, it's amazing how much he can crank out. Mm -hmm. It's great. Wow, it sounds like a dream team. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like your community and your network is like really how you can get into any kind of niche that you're interested in working in, mm -hmm. which I can attest to. You meet that like one person that's just like, oh, hey, here's a job. And it's like, oh, all I had to do is meet you. It's that easy. <laughs> uh, chat, if you have any more questions for Mark, please ask them because like I said, it is his last stream of the week, last stream of the week in general. We do have some submissions that we will be looking at in just a bit for the challenge today. Uh, like I said, the challenge is to create an illustration based off of the theme of movement. That can be literal or it can be a little more figurative, like repetition of shape. We do have a very limited color palette for you to use and we provided the codes for those colors so they can be very exact. Uh, you can use different transparencies and hues or uh, shades and transparencies of those colors if you need to. But you have about an hour and 15 minutes to get those in. So keep them coming, they've been awesome today. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. It'll be really cool. Mm -hmm. Miriam says that they zoned out into the illustration that they're working on and didn't hear a thing we were talking about. <laughs> That's all right, Miriam. It happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm not offended. I'm glad that you're working on your illustration. Kevin and Miriam are both like, are you playing a video or is this real life illustration? This is a time lapse. <laughs> It's pretty cool. One thing that Mark really has down is just decision making. He makes the decisions, he trusts them, and if he doesn't like it, he changes it. Which is uh, one of the great things about Illustrator. You can just switch it up on the fly. Yeah, true. Pamela says, I'm desperately finishing your project. Gotcha, Pamela. You've got an hour and 15 minutes, so. Don't hurry too much. Got a little bit of time. What's up, rock stars? Chatting while heading home. What's up, Mitch? How are the roads today? Hope they're safe. Uh, Lindsay has a question about your decisiveness. Have you mm -hmm. always been decisive when you're making work, or did that come when you were design or developing your design aesthetic? Um, it kind of comes and goes. Like if I'm feeling really inspired and I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'm kind of trying out a limited number of things that I feel is going to work. Yeah. But if I'm working on something much larger, then it's kind of takes longer and longer. Mm -hmm. And I would guess that if you're making something for someone else and you're trying to achieve their vision, it might take you a little longer because mm -hmm. you have to worry about their opinion. <laughs> but maybe not. Maybe you're just super confident in what you make. I always kind of doubt myself when I'm working on something for someone. Mm -hmm. Is this Natural. what they're going to like? Yeah. Uh, am I doing it right? Right. That kind of thing. That's hard because you know that they hired you for your style, or at least you hope so. They hired you because they knew you could do what um, they want. Mm -hmm. But still, you just never know. Oh, so I see. These are some bay windows. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very San Francisco. Cute. Uh, I'm actually going to delete one. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drag this one out. And they have roofs, right? Like little tiny ones on top. Uh, I don't think not always. Not always? But they could. I mean, it's your world. <laughs> Stand in your truth. Whatever. That's what San Francisco's about. Color for live, yes, this is uh, CC, so he's using Illustrator CC. We'll be giving away a CC subscription to the winner of the challenge in about an hour and 10 minutes. And this is your first time in San Francisco, right? Yeah. What has been some things, what have been some things that have kind of stuck out to you about the city? Everyone is really like, Nice. Really? Yeah. You mean like at Adobe or on the street? On the street. Really? Yeah. 
Well, you are from Jersey, aren't you? Yeah, everyone is kind of just, mm. they always have a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. I'm from the Midwest, so I'm like, everyone's so mean here. <laughs> Blah. Big baby. But that's cool. So it's been a positive experience. Yeah. Hmm. Have you seen anything mind blowing? You've seen the steep hills, driven down them. Uh, I went to an AT and T store, and there was a giant dog in there. Like a live dog? No, no, no just oh. a statue. <laughs> it was it the dog that you made? Uh, <laughs> Doggo. <laughs> that would have been uh, kind of scary, actually. Yeah, it's intimidating. <laughs> That's cool, though. There's definitely an appreciation for art all over the city. Oh, that's definitely true. Mm -hmm. Melissa says, I'm working on an environment of your campus layout and you need a grid. Good luck, Melissa. That's cool, you're also working on an environment, just like Mark. Chat, if you are inspired by Mark's environment idea, you could definitely make an environment that shows some sort of movement or an environment that you move within. Who knows? Totally up to you. Yeah. Miriam says, no grid, no reference image. What are you, Mark? <laughs> Human, male. <laughs> I think people are getting a little scared. Scared of me? Yes. I'm harmless, mostly. <laughs> He's just very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> like a wizard. Yeah, there you go. So I'm making this, these uh, really wide boxes only because I realized the coffee shop house here has this little handle that makes it uh, not symmetrical. Yes. So then I had to highlight it all. And now since this is in the center, it's going to just center it. Ah. No cool. So that helps you even though it is a little non-symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Keeps that center line. Nice. Cat says magical. <laughs> Three words. <laughs> uh, let's see. What color should we make it? Mm, make what? The, the the walls of the oh, coffee oh, shop. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, chat, what do you think? What colors? I don't want to do purple again. I was going <laughs> to say, we've done purple. We've done a lot of blue. I think something warm would be cool, like this pink. Maybe like a, almost like a pastel brick kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. That would be cool. Nice. Reminds me of Mario. Oh, so when Melissa was talking about creating a layout for her campus, she's saying that she needs a grid and is wondering why you don't need a grid. How are you just building this isometrically with no grid? Um, well, I keep everything centered. Mm -hmm. And so if I have it centered, then I know how far to put things. And then since the center point is going to be three all the time, if I need something to be centered, I just go to transform. Mm -hmm. So I can select this and go three, and that's done. Perfect. I just realized it's all not centered because of this little thing here. That little guy. And move him out of the way. Highlight all of this. Oh. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Now it's centered. Perfect. Step back in. Yeah. Nice. Anaga says, yeah, looking like brick would be very San Francisco. Thanks. Yeah, lots of brick buildings. The building that we're in right now, it's a beautiful brick old warehouse, converted. <laughs> Melissa, my brain melted again. Uh, <laughs> that happened yesterday, didn't it, Melissa? I remember. <laughs> Miriam's wondering, do you ever use grids or even the golden ratio? The golden ratio? Yeah. Is that like, like the rule the, of thirds? Oh, uh, the rule of thirds. Uh, is that like the Fibonacci sequence? Mm -hmm. Um, not really. Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> cool. I think it, you just know it innately. You yeah. Really... You, after a while, you just kind of feel it out. I agree. Yeah, last stream, I think they were asking, maybe it was Lydia or maybe it was even Kirk. Like, how do you know when your composition is right? And mm -hmm. at a certain point, there are certain things you look for, like the rule of thirds and the golden ratio and all these things that you're just like, I followed all the rules. Looks good. And you just get to, you learn them, kind of like shorthand. And it takes a while, but once you get it, you got it. Mm-hmm, it's like riding a bike. Yeah, Margarita says it's a feeling. 
Mm -hmm. Melissa says, Mark's got the eye. He knows what's up. All right, so I got a little brick kind of texture here. I'm just on, I'm only gonna put a couple of them here and there. Cool. That way you just gotta get the idea that it is brick. Yeah. That's a really smart design decision that I think is a game changer, knowing that you don't have to fully render every single thing. You mm -hmm. can gesture towards things, be like, this is brick, look at these couple bricks, I don't need to put all the details in. It might not mesh, like mesh with the style, might be too much information for a simple illustration. So this is really helpful. Hmm. Having a little bit of trouble thinking about the bay window, so I'm gonna ah. shorten this a little bit. Cool. Put these back in. And uh, let's see. I'm gonna put in regular windows up here. There he goes, using the Pathfinder again. Building the shapes. And let's use a nice blue. Nice little highlight. Yeah. I like your little pill highlights. Thanks. <laughs> Cute little droplets. Uh, Jose's wondering about what color mode that you build in, RGB or CMYK? Uh, I use CMYK because it feels a little bit more familiar to painting. Mm -hmm. So I know how much blue I'm using, how much yellow, how much red. Right. And do you often print your work or is it mostly digital? Mostly digital. Gotcha. His second part of the question was, how does the color kind of configure into printing? But it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like that's so much of an issue for you. Yeah, and uh, CMYK is usually the go-to for printing, right? Yeah, right. So, so it should be all right. Yeah. If it looks good on the screen, it'll look good in print. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, you yes. never know. <laughs> yeah, no worries, Jose. We are here to answer your questions, or Mark's here to answer your questions. So get asking. Jose says, thank you, Mark. You're answering welcome. Answering his question. <laughs> so polite, Jose. Appreciate it. Yeah, I gotta say, the chat is so kind. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever run into any weirdness on Twitch? Yes. Even like not <laughs> showing your face or not talking or anything? There was one guy who was just screaming obscenities. Whoa. I don't know why. Because it's Twitch. Yeah. You won't see that here. <laughs> I hope not. No, you <laughs> won't. <laughs> Please. Chat, you are awesome. We really appreciate you. Margarita says, this chat is pretty gentle. Very gentle. Uh, Mary wants to know, so when you post it online, do you change it to RGB or just upload it as is? I usually bring it into Photoshop mm -hmm. and I do the um, save for web in RGB. Gotcha. And <laughs> make, I'm pretty sure that makes the file size smaller. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it saves yeah. room on my laptop. There you go. So when you're uploading to web, you might not want your image to be such, so high quality. Mm -hmm. Makes it easier to steal unfortunately, but also it's on a screen. So unless it's a retina display, you don't need as high of a PPI. Noelle says it's that three o'clock crashing feeling. Got some tea? Got some coffee? What do you need, Noelle? Make sure to drink your water. Juan says this is just like watching some friends hanging out. <laughs> Isn't that the best part of it, Juan? Natalia says, really love Mark's stream, even ready to watch until 3 a.m. as it is here. Oh my gosh, Natalia. Oh gosh, yeah, that is late. That's the real crashing feeling. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Natalia, are you working on anything? On a submission, homework? I know some people are like, it's 1.30 a.m. and I'm cooking. Are you cooking? Margarita says, what if there's an Adobe live stream coffee shop? 
That'd be cool. So what would that mean, Margarita? Like everyone would go hang out and watch the live stream there. It would be a live stream of a coffee shop. Let's paint, let's paint this picture. All right, this is starting to come together. Heck yeah. Still not sure about the bay window. I don't know if I like the shape. So I'm gonna just play around with it a little bit. Cool. I'm gonna grab this and that. Oops, oops. I'm gonna grab it. Hold up. There we go. And, oh, did uh -oh. it again. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna go into the isolation mode. <laughs> Easier. And Marie, I believe, said that she was working on her submission from, I think it was the first day, the superhero day, mm -hmm. and she made the changes that we told her to make to make the composition stronger. Oh, cool. That's awesome, Marie. Thanks for doing that. She says, I've been wanting to try my hand at illustration, but I'm professionally a graphic designer, and I also make traditional medium art. This week has been a cool launching point for me, and I feel I've learned a lot. Well, that's awesome, great. Marie. You've clearly learned a lot because you took critique and you you implemented it. That's great. Mm. Natalia says that she already finished her submission and now she's just enjoying Mark's speedy illustrating at 3.30 in the morning. Very cool. <laughs> Can't wait to see it. <laughs> yeah, we'll look at them soon. We have the giveaway in about 30 minutes and we usually look at the submission so far right after that. So if you'd like to be shown in the first batch, get those submitted early. Tatsuya has a little bit of a tip. He says, you already have a really speedy workflow, but I think it can be even faster if you create actions for Pathfinder and bind them to key commands. You're probably right, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll have to look into that. Yeah. And I've thought about getting some other gear, because I have a gaming mouse that I use for this. Mm -hmm. I hotkeyed some of the uh, tools. Right, you could do it to that. Yeah. Totally. Nice tip, Tatsuya. I think Kirk, Kirk Wallace, who was streaming earlier, is like the king of efficiency. Mm -hmm. Got all his hotkeys, they are all customized. Only uses the left side of his keyboard. He really amazing. Else, yeah. He really is. <laughs> I'm sure he would tell you all about hotkeys over dinner. <laughs> Pamela just submitted her first artwork for the Adobe Live Challenge. Thank you, Pamela. We'll look at it during the first uh, batch of submissions. And I just opened it and it's really beautiful, so great job. So what are you doing to this bay window to make it more to your liking? I'm just kind of curving the windows a little bit. Yeah. That way it kind of goes with everything else. I agree, I think that was the issue. You totally diagnosed it well. <laughs> Chat, have you ever been to San Francisco? Or are you from here? Let me know, let me know your favorite part or where you would visit if you did come here. Jose wants to know, how do you decide which objects go into your illustrations? What do you mean? Like, uh, what kind of, uh, like, little landmarks, a little, uh, like, details, yeah. like, what kind of windows? Maybe the little details, what inspires you for those, like, little secondary pieces of information you put in there? Um, I, I kind of look at just real life. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in the suburbs, so... Saw a lot of really cool New England architecture, mm -hmm. and they have all these interesting like wooden frames. Uh, here in San Francisco, there's a lot of brick, and I was actually surprised. I thought there was going to be more pastel colors, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there are a couple of buildings that are really nice. Yeah, have you explored like the the neighborhoods where people are living, or have you been mostly like downtown, downtown? Mostly downtown. Yeah, I think once you step into those little nooks and crannies of the neighborhood, it's like, oh, that house is bright pink. That's oh. pretty cool. <laughs> Feels like you're at the beach, but you are not at the beach. 
Let's do it. All right, this is getting closer to what I envisioned. Mm-hmm. It's a little neighborhood coffee shop. Yeah, I think that's also very San Francisco that it's like two levels. Like maybe the owners live on top, mm-hmm. coffee shop in the bottom because things are so expensive. <laughs> Jose says that's exactly what I wanted to know. So you answered his question well. Oh, you're welcome. Nice. Uh, Charles says San Francisco is one of his favorite trips so far. He's from, is am I Michigan? Yeah, because MN is Minnesota. From Michigan, and I use my San Francisco mug every morning at work. Oh, Gives cool. you good vibes, Charles, I'm sure. JC says I went to San Francisco in 99. Good year. That's a good year. Everyone was freaking out over Y2K. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was scary. Like, I was a little kid, but I was like, is the world going to end? I don't know. <laughs> Adults seem to think so. This place is looking cozy. Yeah, I agree. I wonder what their specialty is. (laughs) Hmm, maybe a fog chaser. Never had one of those. I haven't either. I just know the name. (laughs) I'm assuming it has espresso in it. Espresso. Are you a coffee guy? Uh, yeah, I really love coffee, but Mm -hmm. this is, uh, I guess, sacrilege in coffee (gasps) world. Uh, I love instant coffee. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's good for you. It's cheap. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Is that just because that's, like, the first coffee you drank, and that's what you got used to? Yeah, pretty much. Mm Mm-hmm. Interesting. I see you have some coffee from the coffee... Bar? Right here, yeah. Nice. And it is delicious. Is it? That's good. I'm glad. We do have a good little cafe. Mm-hmm. Actually, if you go to my Instagram chat, I have a little like behind the scenes day in the life for Adobe Live, and I show the coffee bar. Oh. If you want to go look at it, <laughs> check it out. It's pretty cool. And Jason says, You like instant coffee because Mark is fast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like waiting. Yeah, get it done now. Jose says, how about Colombian coffee? Uh, never had it. Not there yet, Jose. Our tastes are not refined enough. Oh, Jose says he's seen my story. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Hmm. What kind of doorway should we have? Should we have like double doors, one door? Because hmm. I'm thinking double doors would be nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm trying to think of like a very San Francisco door. And nothing is really coming to mind. Oh, thanks, Adobe Live. There's my Instagram. (laughs) And if you go check out Mark's Instagram, he has a lot of awesome art. And your art translates so well to Instagram because it's already a little square. Yep. Looks real good. I do that on purpose. (laughs) Nice. There you go. Jose says double doors are good. Cool. I have to redo these doors. Lindsay says, a door covered in stickers or posters, very San Francisco. That is true. Mm -hmm. Everybody give props to Adobe Live in chat. He's been around all the day long, always here, always posting links, very present in chat. Thanks, Adobe Live. He's giving a double thumbs up and looking pretty tired. Drinking kombucha. (laughs) Fancy boy. Is it good? Nice. You can also see Adobe Live in my stories. The Gus bot is revealed. Also, the Studio Master Wizard is revealed too. (laughs) Now you have to go watch. It's just too, too interesting. Centered. Perfect. Mm-hmm. So we got a, a nice base for this so, so far. So cute. Uh, it's uh, the divider for the door. Mm-hmm. And a little bit. Make it a nice 
blue. And do a little bit of this. Cool. There we go. Now it kind of fades in. Yeah, those little details. <laughs> so nice. Walid is wondering about your freelance career. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean that you're not working at a company currently? And would you recommend freelancing over working in a company? Uh, I've only worked at one company and I didn't quite enjoy it. I was uh, just working on like the same thing day in, day out. As an illustrator or a graphic designer? A little bit of both. I was yeah. doing posters. Mm -hmm. Um, for some people, you know, they like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't. <laughs> there you go. And the nice uh, thing about doing freelance is I get a new project, I do something else, I can change up the style a little mm -hmm. bit. And it's always an adventure, but it also comes with its own like negatives. Too. Yeah, right. So what are your least favorite things about freelancing? Keeping track of things. It's, Being organized. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. When you work at a company, someone, you know, someone's always on you, so it's taken care of. But when you're on your own, it gets tricky. Yeah, definitely. There's really no one else to blame but your own laziness, your own human <laughs> brain. Um, so when you worked at a company, did you just jump straight into freelance or did you make sure that you had clients first? What was that transition um, like? I kind of just jumped into freelance. You're like, bye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was lucky enough to know some people and I was getting a few jobs here and there. Cool. And for a while, like, still kind of supporting myself doing a part-time job. Mm -hmm. So that's always good, too. That is and key. Kind of keeps things uh, always moving, too. Yeah, keeps life definitely exciting. I think, Waleed, that's a good answer to your question is if you think you want to be a freelancer, make sure that you think you can handle it at that moment. Of course, there's never gonna be a moment that you're like, I'm ready. It's always gonna be scary. That is very true. Mm -hmm. But it's nice <laughs> to kind of, you know, do the night shift, mm -hmm. freelance, make sure that something that you even like to do too. A lot of people try it and they're like, too stressful. I like to have the, the stability of a nine to five. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. That's kind of how I feel. All right. So we got the little coffee shop. Uh, I'm thinking we can make a little patio as well. Yeah, I'd love that. Um, what do you think, chat? Would you go sit on this patio? Sit outside, enjoy a cup of joe. Cup of joe. Only instant coffee is sold here <laughs> because it's Mark's. <laughs> uh, Melissa wants to know, do you have multiple projects going on at the same time? And how do you not keep from going crazy? She's swamped and other things just keep coming in. Oh, that's actually really great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I those know. are good problems. Boo, Melissa, it sounds so bad. <laughs> so much work. <laughs> uh, I try to stay with like only about two to three projects. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll take on like really small things that I can finish up really quickly. Yeah. But otherwise I just get too stressed out and I'm like, uh, Yeah. We're all human. <laughs> Super true. Yeah, and also your art directors and the companies that you're working with are human also. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really good to just be honest, upfront about what you can handle. But that's good to hear because in my freelance experience, I haven't really answered that question yet of how much work I can handle. So it's good to know that you, two or three at a time, maybe some small ones. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think, Chad? What would you like to handle if you're freelancing? Natalia wants to be swimming in the cup on top. <laughs> nice. That's a lot of coffee. That's a lot of coffee. Definitely. Ooh, Adobe Live says, under the giant coffee pot is a funnel that supplies coffee to the entire shop. <laughs> it's sun brewed. Would that be good? I mean, mm. I mean tea is like that. Yeah, Adobe uh, Live's like, oh yeah, it'd be good. Because yeah? <laughs> it's his idea. <laughs> I would just worry about birds. Pigeons, specifically. Don't want no pigeon juice. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thomas says, I have four client projects right now and it's too much. So in the future, I will book less if I can. Great, thanks for being honest. Yeah, I feel like at the beginning, you're probably gonna inevitably stretch yourself too thin. Mm -hmm. And the good thing to learn from that is 
if you do only a few projects and kind of keep things in control, your quality will be better. Yep, definitely. You want to present your best self, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to add some trees. I'm going to keep this over here on the side for now. Cool. I like him. Yeah. A little shrubby top. I'll add some birds, too. Just give this place a little bit of light. No, keep the birds away from the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking for trouble. Uh, Waleed is wondering more about your freelance experience. When you started freelancing, did you target local clients or global? Um, I don't really remember where mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of like little small, like local things for a couple of friends. Gotcha. So it's um, mostly friends. Yeah. I started out like doing posters and a little bit of graphic design for my friend's band. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then from there, I just kind of, you know, worked my way. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So Alid, I think kind of utilizing your network that you already have, make it very obvious in your social media accounts that yes, I'm looking for work. If you need anything, let me know because people don't know unless you tell them. That is true. Just something that I'm learning. It's like, it's okay to say that you're looking for work. It's not something to be shameful of. A lot of people like on Twitter will just have their pinned tweet at the top that says like, I'm an illustrator. This is a style I work on. Here's some examples of my work. Email me if you'd like to hire me. No biggie. And definitely like have a link to your portfolio mm -hmm. or something to on your Twitter if you're going to go branding from there. Yes, so. definitely. I think one, a really big issue that art directors and clients run into is just not even knowing how to contact you. Just because mm -hmm. your art's out there doesn't mean your contact information is there. Having your either your email address or your phone number available on like every experience that they have with you, whether it be in your portfolio, on your Twitter, make it super visible. So I just copied the top of the mug because I forgot what kind of like shape the oval is uh -huh. for this land yeah so i figured just copy that and i'll make it smaller make little coffee tables oh cool so you're utilizing that specific oval mm -hmm. that is the oval for this world very nice people are wondering about the giveaways yes forest we are giving away two pins in about 15 minutes so we have the photoshop lapel pin and the Adobe Illustrator lapel pen, and we'll be giving away both of these to one lucky viewer. So make sure that you are logged in on Behance. be.net slash live is where we are. That's where you can chat with us. And you can also submit to the challenge there. And if you don't have an Adobe ID already, just make one. They're really, really quick to make. Doesn't require a lot of work and gives you instant access to the chat box and access to the giveaway. I want to see how you build this little thing. Uh, it's almost done, actually. Cool. Oh, I see. It's just going to be like a pedestal one. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think I might make it tall and uh, make it more of like a standing table. Yeah, like a bar table. Yeah. Plus, that way I don't have to make chairs. <laughs> I love the way the designer's brain works. It's like, I don't want to draw a hand. I'll put his arm behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> No one will ever know. A little shortcuts. Mm-hmm. Marie. Right. Oh, go ahead. So that's all done. I grouped it all together. And I'll make them real small. Shrink it down. I feel like it's uh, a little too tall. Mm-hmm. Because I want it to look a little bit wider. Do you ever have trouble building your assets large and then shrinking them down? keeping the, the detail readable from far away? Uh, occasionally. Like yeah. Here, mm -hmm. I'm having a little bit of issues. Is, uh, that one really dark rim at the bottom, yeah, not I... very readable from like here. Yeah, right. Or, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to be looking at it this <laughs> small, but right. uh, even like here, so mm -hmm. this is 150% uh, view. Yeah, you can't even see it. Right. So what I might do is just make it a little bit bigger. Go into the isolation mode, select that. And that's looking a little bit better. And I think I might make the stem just a little bit smaller. 
I, I think I like that. Cool. I chose a nice red to match the uh, the brick. Mm -hmm. and let's put some tables out over here. Let's get some customers coming. <laughs> got the tables, we've got the coffee, the giant pot. Come on over to our shop. We've got about 10 more minutes until we're going to do the giveaway, and that also means we're going to be reviewing submissions that have already been submitted for the challenge that is going to end in about 40 minutes. So the challenge deadline is 4.30 p.m. Pacific time, 40 minutes from now. Uh, but in 10 minutes, we'll look at the submissions that have already been sent in. We are challenging you, chat, to create an illustration based on the idea of movement. So whatever that means to you in this piece, it could be the movement of the wind through the trees, the fast movement of Mark's illustration skills, <laughs> All kinds of things, and we are challenging you also to use a very uh, limited color palette. So we have those codes provided for you in the challenge tab at be.net slash live. So go check that out. You've got a little bit of time left, and this is the last chance to enter the challenge for the week. So make sure you get your submissions in before 4.30, or else we won't be able to look at them. So sad. All right. So we got a nice neighborhood coffee shop going mm -hmm. um let's see gonna add in some shrubs that'd be nice mm -hmm. people like greenery right totally especially in the city <laughs> <laughs> not quite sure what that was <laughs> we've got a mouse in the studio <laughs> Miriam says, the tree is forever alone. Not for long, Miriam. Not for long at all. A shrub all. is coming. A nice little shrub. I'm going to put it right on the edge there. Oh, cool. I see. I like that. I just change up the sides a little bit. Make this one a little bit lighter. There we go. It's looking nice. Heck looking yeah. cozy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> little natural barrier. Marie says, good grief, what time did this start? Mark is ridiculously fast. <laughs> I know, I'm like, we still got an hour left, so this is gonna get way more detailed, I think. <laughs> like this could be done. It's like, nope. I'm Mark. Gotta go the extra mile. Niklas says, I love the cup, the big cup on top. Yeah, I like adding weird little things on houses. Mm -hmm. uh, like in my places project, there's a couple of houses that have just bizarre little roofs. Like there's one that's a, a bowler hat. Oh, <laughs> let's see if I can get that pulled up. We can take a peek while you're working. And I think there's one that's a um, an anvil, I think they're called. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah. We've got a, is it a pumpkin or a tomato uh, hat? Oh, I think that's a pumpkin. Pumpkin. What is this? It looks very shiny. Oh, that's the anvil. Oh. <laughs> it's a little blacksmith's house. Yeah. Oh, cute. <laughs> and it's got the little, like, smith or the kiln in the back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These seriously do look like video game assets. I think, oh, there's the bowler's hat. Yeah. Which is that. <laughs> potion ice cream hat but I really think that you are showing the work that you want to receive from clients mm -hmm. which is really smart like overall dream I want to make a Zelda game any oh. kind of like hack and slash mm -hmm. kind of thing puzzle solving that kind of a thing I really want to do I think that might happen hopefully yeah Richa says I like the witch hat <laughs> JC thinks that we're saying an Ebola hat. Oh. A bowler. <laughs> it's a type of hat. It's like a round hat. <laughs> it's popular in Britain, I think. Yeah. That painting with the guy with the oh, apple the over apple his face. Yeah. Is that by someone with an M? Uh, there was a really good movie with that painting. Yeah. With, uh, I think, Pierce Bronson? I'm not sure. Oh. Magritte. That's who it is. I knew it was an M. Mondrian? No. A little bit of art history for you guys. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, this is looking cozy. Yeah. Matthew says, there's already too many Zelda games. I don't have enough time to play them all. <laughs> have you guys played Breath of the Wild yet? I haven't. 
I have not either. <gasps> you haven't, and you're such a big fan? Yeah, I know. I'm a bad fan. But you, maybe you don't have a Switch? No. Yeah. I'm hoping to get one this year. Me too, secretly. But I really just kind of only want to play that game. So I'm like, is it worth it? That's a really expensive game. So. <laughs> I really want to play uh, Splatoon. Mm-hmm. That looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, there's a fellow illustrator. Her name's Sid Weiler, and she is very into Splatoon. Oh, yeah. I like, love her. Uh, she did the pigeons. Oh, yeah, yeah Trash Dove. <laughs> <laughs> trash Dove. Richa says it's so beautiful. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Chat, we do have a giveaway in five minutes, as you see on the screen, or saw on the screen. We are giving away these two lapel pins. Photoshop, I believe these are called the mnemonics. These are the little icons. And the illustrator mnemonic. Do, 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 do. There's tons of funny names for things here at Adobe, like <laughs> official names for things that you wouldn't know that have official names. Um, but that's what these are. And we'll be giving them away to one lucky viewer. So all you have to do is be logged in on Behance, be.net slash live. You can use your Adobe ID or make one on Behance. Don't worry, it's free, it's easy. Gives you access to lots of good stuff. And we'll pick a winner. When it gets closer to the time of the giveaway, we'll ask you to be active in chat. That's how you enter the giveaway. And we'll work some Adobe magic to pick someone. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna add a nice little fence in the back uh, because they don't want customers going to the trash area. The trash dove area. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm gonna work big. That way I can just minimize it. Cool. And to do all this, I'm just doing Control C, Control F, Control D. Ah. And I do a whole bunch. I'm not even counting. I'm just continually pressing it up. And there we go. I've got a whole lot of them, but Wait. I think I'll make a few more. I need some more. So control C mm -hmm. and then control F. Yep. That's paste in front. Yes. And then control, uh, I moved one over. Move it. Okay. And then I do control D and that copies the movement. Gotcha. So another thing you can do chat uh, is just another workflow for the same thing as you have your image, have it selected, hold, um, I believe it's option or maybe, yeah, option or alt and click and drag. It'll drag a copy and then you can command D, command D, command D. It'll make copies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about Adobe. There's like a million ways to do the same thing. A million ways to skin a cat, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ken says, amazing illustration, Mark. Well, thank you. It's really coming together. Oh, Noel has your Twitch. Uh, username linked, so you can go follow him there if you'd like to see him. You usually stream on the weekends, you said? Uh, Fridays. Fridays. Yeah. Gotcha. You think you'll stream this Friday? Will you be flying? <laughs> no, I don't think so. This is me on the plane, <laughs> watching Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, Matthew's wondering, does, any, does anyone else find that video games help them be more creative? Yeah. Yes. What else, chat? Do you think so? Me watching my brothers play Final Fantasy VII was like a big catalyst for me to be interested in art. <laughs> Miriam says, I just bent over to pick up my pencil and when I got back, the whole fence was done. <laughs> Gotta be quick. Sorry. <laughs> Gotta keep your head on a swivel, Miriam. <laughs> All right, this is looking good. Um, hmm. I think we should add a chimney. Cool. Bring all this down a little bit. <clears throat> Most steamy chimney. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Don't know where to add it. Ah, chat, what do you think? Maybe we can make it look like a straw coming out of the coffee itself. Oh. I think that would be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we could at least try it. Yeah doesn't work, it doesn't work. And speaking of things not working, <laughs> Jose's wondering if an illustration isn't working as Mark is planned, how long does it take for you to start over? Or do you ever start over? Ooh, that <clears throat> kind of varies. Sometimes I get really invested in something and it goes like hours and then I look at it and I think, eh. And you really don't want to skin your cat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep inserting it. <laughs> okay, so what do you do then? I just trash it. Oh, just 
just hit that delete button. Yep. <laughs> okay. And then the second one is almost always better. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I can't get like one certain thing just right. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know what? It works. Yep. I know. There is such a piece of making art that's like, no one's ever going to know that I had to even make this decision. So just make a decision. It works. It's fine. There was a teacher at school who was like, don't be afraid to just scrap it all. Mm hmm. It's sometimes almost, it's better. Yeah, sometimes it's a good exercise. Like, even if you kind of like it, it's like, all right, I'm starting over. Just an exercise. Mm, there was a, a drawing teacher we had that uh, we would do like five minute poses. And mm -hmm. he would tell us to rip out the page and step on it and <laughs> throw it out. That's really it good. Didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, that's also something to be said about the kind of paper, if you do draw on paper that you draw on. Mm -hmm. um, I think drawing on just like plain copier paper or computer paper, not in a sketchbook, not bound to anything, makes it a lot easier to be free with your drawings because you can just recycle it if you don't like it. Yeah. You don't have to tear it out. You don't have to make that decision to like mar your sketchbook. Just get a big stack of paper. All right, chat, it's about that time to get the hype rolling. Come on, chat, there's several hundred of you in here that I know want this, want these pins. So say They're something pretty in awesome chat. Pins. They are, they're well made, they're metal. They'll give you a full screen so you can see them a little bit better. Are these nice, shiny? This is what they look like for reference. Can you see my hands <laughs> in the way? That's the size, there you go. Uh, all you have to do is say something in chat. That is how you enter the giveaway. If you're not logged in, log in right now. Make Should we ask them a question? Like, yeah. A favorite type of pasta. Because that's <laughs> Mark's favorite. You're like, no big deal. This is a random question. Just kidding. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite kind of pasta? Do you mean like noodle type or uh, dish? Dish. Let's go with dish. Oh. I don't know if I have an answer. Do you have an answer? Uh, I'm gonna go with pasta bolognese. Oh. It is my favorite. So is that just like pasta with meat sauce? Yeah. Gotcha, classic. Alrighty, chat, you are going crazy. They're saying shrimp linguine. Ooh, good pizza is Noelle's favorite. <laughs> Fettuccine pizza pasta. Se uh, seafood pasta, meatballs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Miriam says, as if y'all are gonna read all the answers, watch me marry him. We got pizza, we got a whole wheat rigatoni, we got seafood alfredo. <laughs> all right, we have a, a winner. Choices. Yeah, seriously, cannolis or cannellones. Um, we have a winner that has magically appeared in front of our eyes. Mark, would you do the sure. honors? Willard Stevens, You Congrats. are the winner, yay! Congratulations, Willard, you're the winner of these two lapel pins, you get them both totally for free, compliments of Adobe Live. So make sure you are watching in your Behance messages. We will be messaging you soon and getting those sent out ASAP. But thank you everyone for being so hype in the chat. You never disappoint with your hype levels. All right, so I think I'm gonna work on the foreground a little bit. I'm gonna go back into this green color that I separated on, as a different layer. Cool. So let's work from here. We should add some flowers. Everybody likes flowers. Agreed. Confirmed. Chat, do you like flowers? <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to make such a sweeping statement. But then again, if you don't like flowers, then oh, you <laughs> might want to rethink. Jade said, this is crazy fast, amazing work. Thank you. Agreed. And chat, I'm opening up your submissions so we can look at them in just a few minutes. We like to do a little first batch of submissions to help people get really inspired uh, as they continue to work on their submissions. The deadline is in about 25 minutes. And you have that much time, if you haven't started yet, to start your challenge. So this flower is a little bit big. There we go. That's my size. Do you have a flower that you always use? Is this like uh, your quintessential flower? Yeah, this one, this little shape. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just iconic. Uh, people will recognize it immediately. Yep. 
Agreed. Marie says, no, I hate flowers. They're terrible. I remember when they invented flowers. <laughs> Marie. 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> when I was your age. Oh, she did it in the SpongeBob cranky chocolate lady voice. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Speaking of chocolate, I bought some today. Really? Yeah. Tell me more. Uh, I got some really nice uh, Ghirardelli dark chocolate for Ooh. my mother. Hey, hey, mom. She's going to be happy and mad. Because? She always complains that she eats too much. <laughs> that she shouldn't be eating this, she shouldn't be eating that. But it's a gift, Ma. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's really sweet. There's a really good chocolate place in San Francisco called Dandelion. Dandelion. Dandelion Chocolatier, I think. Super fancy. Uh, Tetsuya is wondering, have you ever considered starting a Patreon to help fund your loot book project? I've thought about it. And I feel like if I'm going to do that, it's going to require a lot of work, a lot of mm -hmm. preparation. Got to make it look real nice, yep. or at least start to look nice. Yeah. So that is definitely uh, one avenue I want to explore. I don't know when that will be, but I'm definitely have my uh, eyes on it. Gotcha, Tatsuya. Keep your eyes out. I've also looked into uh, Kickstarter. Yeah, definitely. That's cool. If Voodoo Val was still here, she might be able to tell you more about it. She's done a Kickstarter in the past. Oh. But I think she gone. Oh. <laughs> uh, Lindsay says, I feel like I got to the fourth round of submissions today and was just out of oomph. Oh. Lindsay, did you submit all four times? Wow, that's so much work. That's good exercise. Heck yeah. And you know, that's that's the real goal of these challenges. It's, it's really to get the community actually working on art while we're working on art. Or while you're working on art. This is cozy. It is. I just want to take a nap here. <laughs> right on top. Crush it. Kind of reminds me of Animal Crossing. Totally. Did you play the mobile game? Uh, I did for like two weeks. Yeah. I feel like that's <laughs> a story with everybody. I didn't even play for two weeks. I, I opened it like five times. And I love <laughs> Animal Crossing. And I think that's why I was so hard on it. Meh. I had like the old Nintendo DS game version. Oh. Um, and that was fun. You mean New Leaf? Uh, or even older? I don't know. I forget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think New Leaf's the newest one. It might be 3DS actually. Oh, I didn't didn't have that. Yeah, cool. This is old school, the first Nintendo DS, the mm -hmm. big brick. Gotcha. <laughs> Probably not New Leaf. Man, what a beautiful, beautiful game. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Jade says, these challenges have been fabulous. They take your mind off of crazy client work. Good. I'm glad. Maybe after I get these all open, we can take a pick, a pick, a peek <laughs> at the submissions so far. Does that sound okay? You had a good stopping Sounds point? Like a plan to me. All right. All right. Oh, Here, wow. I know. These, this color palette is just wacky, first and foremost. It's a really strange like pairing of complementary colors. Mm -hmm. I Definitely. really dig this. Yeah. A lot of movement in here. Definitely. So, chat, the challenge is the theme is movement, and we want you to create an illustration based off that using the limited color palette that we provided in the challenge tab. So, that gives you a little bit of reference. Uh, nice. Kind of want to see a little bit of the third color in, but mm -hmm. I feel like maybe you're still working on it. Gotcha, yeah. Makes sense. Maybe if I refresh it. Something new? No? Nope. <laughs> That's not how Imgur works. <laughs> but nice job, great movement. Ooh, I like this too. Yeah, here's Richa's work. Really bold shape. Mm -hmm. uh, you lose a little bit of the elements of the face. But right. I feel like you can definitely work on that. Yeah, I feel like you can even brighten up the biggest shape of the face mm -hmm. and darken up the darker values. There's also this just kind of nuanced movement showing the different frames of a possible animation. Really, really nice. Cool. Yeah. Nice job, Richa. This is by Kimberly. <laughs> She's so happy. Walking on uh, your way to work. Yeah, I was going to say, who's this happy walking to work? I don't know. <laughs> but nice job, Kimberly. Very cool. Yeah, really nice simplification of the background. Mm -hmm. So your eye doesn't travel there. Too quickly. I like the texture on the uh, the sidewalk. Yeah, really polka cool. dots. Is there anything that you would work on? Uh, maybe the shape of the shoes. Mm -hmm. A little too 
too angular compared to the rest of her. Gotcha. Uh, and maybe a little bit of detail in the background. Just a hint. Gotcha. Like one or two things. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I actually really like how angular these are. And I would say maybe make the shape character of the rest of her even more exaggerated. You Just can how go that the, way too. the shoes are. Yeah, either or. <laughs> nice job, Kimberly. This is by Natalia, mm. another bird. A lot of birds today. He's looking at us. He's coming to get us. <laughs> Scared. <laughs> Cool. I what like do you the think? wings. Yeah, it's my uh, favorite part. I like the use of using like a one, just one shape and kind of repeating it. Mm -hmm. uh, adds a lot of layers to it. Yep. Really nice. Uh, I'd say maybe bring in that reddish color of the feet somewhere else too. Mm -hmm. Right now my eye is like going straight to the beak and straight to the feet. Yep. Yeah, maybe the eyes could also be that cool red color. Or maybe just under the beak have that color. Yeah, definitely. Nice job, Natalia. Ooh. Cute. A wizard? A yes. Witch, maybe? Sort of a magical yeah. being. <laughs> maybe it's the rabbit that's magical. Ooh. It's like her little golem. I really like like the story elements of this. Mm -hmm. um, I would say maybe... Huh. I don't know which way to pull it or push it with the colors of the face. Mm-hmm. Because uh, her wardrobe and the hair are kind of fading together, but the face is really pumped up and yeah, contrasted. Yeah, really stark. Yeah. Let's so play around a little bit with the color. Yeah. Right. But all overall, really nice. Nice job. This by Ryan, a sweet stallion. <laughs> it's a really nice mixture of geometric shapes mixed with this watercolory texture. Yeah, that is really nice. I like the textures in both the top part and the bottom part, mm -hmm. and I think there's just enough of each where they're working really well. Yeah, I think the balance works. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Ryan. So this is the update oh, of, yeah. I believe, Melissa's work. And I remember, I think it was the line weight. Mm -hmm. So it's I advise nice. to watch the line weight. Mark recommended a more unified color palette. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember totally the colors that you had previously, so it's hard to judge. The blues are working a little bit better with those yeah. greens. They feel uh, like the green, the darkest green of the, uh, I'm going to say orc. <laughs> <laughs> kind of feels like a lighter shade of her blue jumpsuit. Yeah. So that's really working well. Mm -hmm. I agree. Definitely more unified. So thank you so much for taking our thoughts into consideration and bumping up your work. This is Pamela's first submission to Adobe Live. Who's this? Okay, gotcha. So this is Pamela's first submission to Adobe Live ever. Thank mm. you so much for sharing your work. I know that's scary. It's really nice. Yeah, lots of movement in here for sure. Yeah. I really like the hand. This hand, this one is a little confusing to me. Oh yeah, a little bit. Um, um, but this one has a really nice, simple shape to it. Yeah, I would look at a reference photo or even use your own hand as a reference. Mm -hmm. and maybe simplify it a little bit, almost like a silhouette. Yeah. Like maybe you don't have to show each finger, but like the hand as a whole. Right, right, I agree. I think you do a good job of that with the hair, like these big chunks of hair. You mm -hmm. can do something similar with the fingers. So nice job, Pamela. Whoa. Whoa. Literal animation. movement. So cool. Yeah. This is sweet. Nice job, Jade. Hmm. It'd be awesome. I know this is like asking so much since you only have an hour and a half to work on it, but to show more of a complete loop, like it's going up. And then maybe you see it fall down in the sky over there, or like a new rocket gets wheeled out into the space. And I would say to make it feel like it's really jumping out, the, the rocket, have it rumble a little bit yeah. at the bottom, yep. and then shoot real quick. Yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Jade. We always love to see a little bit of animation, and even this little highlight right here on the hills, mm -hmm. really realistic, but simplified. This is Denise Oso, oh, it's oh. an updated version. Cool. Yeah. Nice job, Looking Denise. Mm -hmm. I believe the colors are, maybe you can go back a little. Is it the same? I, mm, 
Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> but let us know, Denise, if it's the same or not. But it's always nice to see it twice. Oh, this one's nice, too. Dance free. Definite movement. Mm -hmm. Not only in the, the act of dancing, but also her body shape and these diagonal lines. Yeah, I like to play the vertical lines and the diagonal lines. Yeah, nice job. Mm -hmm. This is by Florian. <laughs> really cool simplified little birds. I like their little rocket heads. Those are yeah. really cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I think my favorite part is this little hint of another one mm. down here. I love it when things kind of break out of the, the frame to show depth. Yeah. Atmosphere. Very cool. I would maybe bring in a, a little bit of a cloud somewhere in the front. Yeah, that's true. Show a little bit of depth even like right yeah. in there or transparency. Mm -hmm. Good job, Florian. Whoa. Yeah, it looks like this was like rotoscoped or taken from an actual live video. So cool. I love the shadow of yeah, the cheetah. That, that is a nice uh, choice. Mm hmm. Nice job, Juan Camilo. <laughs> so, anything that they can work on for next time? Um. Oh, that's from whoa. Before. That was a previous <laughs> submission. Uh, maybe do like a gust of wind, maybe like a really yeah. nice line going through mm -hmm. and have that animated too. So it looks like it's running through something. Yeah, That'd right. Be cool. Or even tiny little dust clouds mm -hmm. when the paws hit the ground. I know also hour and a half is not a lot of time, but if you want to continue to work on it, there you go. <laughs> Skateboarding grandma, Ooh. such a punk grandma. I love all of these little like scars or glasses are broken. Mm -hmm. Such a punk. And great use of the color palette. Mm hmm Yeah. What do you think that they could work on? Uh, maybe a little bit of the line weight can vary in some areas. Mm -hmm. uh, like maybe under the dress you can use a little bit more of the dark color of the line weight mm -hmm. to add shadow. True. Um, but altogether this is looking really solid. Right. I agree. And maybe like specifically the line weight, maybe this line could be thinned out a little bit. Mm -hmm. These designate that it's closer. That should be a little thinner. Really nice little character design there. Ooh. Rain Man. Hmm. Let's see. I think there's really nice visual movement. This diagonal line leading you mm -hmm. right to him and also these lines leading to him. Uh, I'm not sure if I like the texture of using rain on top. I think maybe you can just do a couple of droplets coming down and that'll give enough of an idea to the viewer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, I don't, know, I don't know if it's a texture over the whole thing or if it's giving the idea of a rain, yeah. uh, like rainy day. Yeah, I think you could make it more your own. Mm -hmm. And maybe that could be said for a couple of these other elements, like maybe these lampposts are all a little bit different, a little bit wonky. Nice. Cool. Very clean. And this is the last submission that we'll show until the giveaway or the challenge deadline in about 10 minutes. Let's see if we can show the full thing. Maybe. There you really go. funky. Cool. Super funky. I really love this little bit of texture right here. I uh, wish it was like shown in other places. I barely see it. Yeah, it's really faint. There's like a little oh, bit of speckling. Yeah. That is nice. Mm hmm really funky. <laughs> and since it is so simple, I think texture can really come in here and help mm -hmm. uh, make it a little more visually interesting and move your eye around it. And maybe you can kind of mimic that kind of squiggliness of the arms and the whole body, mm -hmm. making it yeah. look like it's really swaying from side to side. Definitely. I see this little toes a tap in. Mm -hmm. Let's get it in the whole body, a little Kiro Skiro going. Yeah. <laughs> so nice job, everyone. Those are the submissions. Uh, for now, but we will be looking at the rest of them. Don't worry when the challenge deadline hits, which is in about 10 minutes. So if you're still working, get those submitted as soon as you can. <laughs> All right, back to Mark. All right. What's next? Uh, hmm, I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow here, but I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to use stroke for it. Ooh, I love this little dashed line technique. Classic Mark <laughs> technique that you used for the the drooly tongue. Yeah. The first day. 
So you can use anything for anything. kind of make it random, play around with it. Man, these submissions are really hard to whittle down. <laughs> Making this decision so tough. And Adobe Live Team has it. You are all winners and awesome artists just for submitting. It's super scary to share your work, especially if you're not used to it. So especially for those who have never submitted before and just submitted, like I believe, maybe it was Pamela, if I'm correct. Proud of you, girl. So I don't know how I feel about these red flowers. Oh. I'm pump them up a little bit. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. Cool. What were you thinking before? They were too dark or too desaturated? A little too desaturated and I didn't know how I felt about using red. I was thinking hmm. maybe I can throw them into yellow and that would look really nice or even blue. But gotcha. I thought the blue would go, it would look too similar to the concrete I'm using here. Yeah, I think having the red kind of move and trickle through the entire piece is nice too. Mm -hmm. All right, this foreground's looking good. Uh, I'm gonna add another layer in between. Another layer? <laughs> what? Yeah, going a little too layer crazy today, but it's gonna look good, I think. Promise. <laughs> so I see that you do have a lot of layers, and is that mostly just large assets grouped together in different layers? Um, actually, I'm only using three layers. These. Previous oh. layers are all other things that I've done. Oh, that's from um, your previous <laughs> work. I was like, what are all those purple things? Does not look like what you're working on. Aha. Now Mary wants to know, why does only one of the tabletops have a shadow? Uh, Cause I'm gonna use like a left light source like I did with all the loot. Oh. So just a small indication, like I have little highlights here and here, mm -hmm. and a highlight on the right here because th this part would be under shadow, mm -hmm. and I figured the shadow would go a little bit here. Gotcha. And it's, then, a, it's a very sunny day, but you can tell there's a little bit of an angle. So the two tables on the left wouldn't have any shadow? No, I don't think so. Because they're totally in the sunlight. I wanted to do like a little bit of sky, but I don't know. <laughs> so if I use a lot of blue, it's gonna look a little weird. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna not. <laughs> uh, let's see. So when we were reviewing Marie's submission where she had shown her progress from the previous challenge, there were more pages oh. to the submission. Sorry I missed that. Adobe Live Team was trying to tell me that and I did not understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she has the feedback notes, which is, this is really awesome, Marie, good to see. Um, for this entry, Kat advised to watch contrast in the image helmet being too light and Mark recommended that stars be bigger and add a subtle gradient, making the bottom darker. So mm -hmm. this one is adjusted from the feedback. And this one is the one that she entered. I like it. It's mm -hmm. giving a lot more emphasis on the dog's face. Yep. So that's re working really well. And I like that you brought in the purple from the planet into the helmet. So that's really yeah. nice. Yeah. Right. The first thing you look at is this good boy's face. <laughs> I think you could make it even lighter. Mm hmm. Like really draw the attention there. And I don't know. I, I feel like the. Um, gradient you're using is multiply and probably like a really dark color. Oh. I think if you use a little bit more saturation, it would really make the, the grays and the dark areas feel less desaturated. I agree. Yeah, give it a little bit of depth. Mm -hmm. So there's one more. Let's see about this one. Oh, and then mm -hmm. I guess there was no feedback on this cool cockatiel. Nice. I remember really seeing cool. this. Yeah. So nice job, <laughs> Marie. Thank you so much for taking our thoughts into consideration. That's awesome. Oh, page three was today. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. All right, this is looking nice. 
<laughs> I like how you're like patting yourself on the back the whole time. This is good. Mark did good. <laughs> That's important to do. I think so many artists are so hard on themselves. Some more trees. I'll make a very green place. Yeah. Um, let's see. Should we do like a different color tree? Yeah. I'm, I'm always down for that. I really like cherry blossoms. Yeah, I think Jose was saying that too. He really likes them. So we're gonna make this one into a cherry blossom. Love it. Springtime. Yeah, they're gonna start blooming soon, right? Mm -hmm. That'll be nice to see. I would love to see those in Japan one day. Same here. <laughs> awesome. Go there for Hanami. Enjoy all the sakura flavored beverages and treats. It would be so anime. Yep, Adobe Live, you've got it. There are four more minutes to submit to the challenge. So if you are still working, make sure to start uploading very soon because you never know if your internet's gonna give out. Uh, and if it's past the deadline, we can't look at it and it's the last chance to submit. So we wanna make sure it's worth your while to get feedback. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel says, you can also grow cherries in America. Totally. I know DC is really popular for their cherry blossoms. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty too. All right. Uh, hmm. The tricky part with all these kind of isometric things is what to do in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Usually in old school video games, they kind of just make a wall. Like it's all rocks or you know, something like that. Right. Um, someone is wondering, it's Muhammad. Do you have any tips on layer management? Sorry for asking multiple times. That's all right. It's the first time I That's saw fine. it, Muhammad. Um, layer management? Usually I work in all one layer. So I, whenever I do something really complicated, I kind of build something and then work behind it or work on top. And I group things together. So the house here is all one group. And then I have the little foreground area that's all one group and each coffee table is one thing. Mm -hmm. That way I can pick and choose what I'm gonna work on really quickly. And it's not like, oh, I wanna change this one little color. I don't have to go looking for it. Yeah, there you go. And I think layers and illustrator might be a little more, I don't know, vague in their usefulness as opposed to Photoshop. It's like, yeah, you you, you use layers to make sure things stay separate so they can stay editable, non-destructive. Mm -hmm. Illustrator, it's like you could also use groups or jump into the isolation mode. Lots of different ways to use them. Robzilla says, yeah, DC is known for the cherry blossoms and he's allergic. Oh. No. <laughs> How'd you, you find that from out? Far. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Look at them from across the lake. Uh, Jade was wondering about these live demos. Are they daily? They are almost daily. We do Adobe Live most every Tuesday through Thursday, 9 to 5 p.m. Pacific time. And every week is a different theme. So this week has been desktop illustration. We've had four amazing designers. We had Logan in the morning and then Kirk after that, followed by Lydia and finishing up the day with Mark all working on different things, but all of them are illustration. Next week, we're gonna be focusing on mobile illustration. So making illustrations on the go, using mobile apps, mobile devices, checking out these workflows that are pretty new to the scene. They are just being figured out and they're awesome. We have a mobile giant with us. It is Robzilla, he's in chat. He is one of the giants of the mobile world. Go check out his portfolio if you're interested in seeing what I mean. Mm. Sorry, I'm just looking from this screen to one of the monitors here. Just That's smart. See, just to see if the color is looking good. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, it's a little dull, but I think we can punch it up <laughs> just punch a bit. Punch it up. Mm. There we go. I think this is looking okay. I think that that added background is so nice. Yeah, <laughs> I can throw in some mountains too. Heck yeah. 
Augustina says hi from Argentina. Hello. How are you, Augustina? Welcome to the chat. Welcome to Adobe Live. This is your first time here. Let us know. Uh, Richa, Robzilla is Rob Generet the third in chat. Rob, sound off so people can click on your face. Check out your portfolio. Yeah, Adobe Live, that's a wrap for the challenge. So thank you so much, everyone who have submitted. I'll get all of these new submissions open here. Toot sweet. We'll look at them, and then Mark will pick a winner very soon. Ooh, the pressure. Ooh, the pressure. It's tough. Mohammed wants to know, Mark, how do you choose your colors? As you're doing recolor <laughs> artwork right now. <laughs> um, I kind of just eye it, eyeball it, see what's uh, what's working, what's not. Uh, and I tried to keep with an, like an analogous color palette. So here I'm using a lot of greens going into blues. And I'm doing a little bit of complementary stuff. We're using reds. So red and green looks really nice. Um, and then what I usually do for just lighting and shading, I try to stick with yellows for light and a little bit of red and blue for darker colors. Makes sense. It's almost like a system. Yeah, and it also keeps your work looking very cohesive, mm -hmm. which is great for client work, so people will see your work and be like, oh yeah, that's a Mark Guzmiani for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Walid has a deep cut question. Ooh. What keeps you motivated Ouch. daily? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Uh, I think since I haven't really achieved what I want, like the true end goal of making like a mm -hmm. like a full video game, something people buy in, you know at a store, yeah, that's keeping me going. It, having like some kind of goal or dream. Gotcha. And I get this sense when you're over here making art that you're just like really happy to be creating. I, I actually wouldn't know what I would be doing if I didn't do art. There you go. You found your, your place in the world. <laughs> Something to be thankful for. Nice. Yeah, Robzilla will be here next week, everybody. So make sure you come back for his hosting. Robzilla's warrior artwork. He did some work for the Warriors. It's uh, on the TVs around Adobe HQ. It's been cycling through. I've seen it a couple times. All right, chat, we're getting these submissions open. We'll do a little bit of a review, some critiquing, some commenting in just a minute. Luis, hi from Mexico, what's up? All right, you ready to head into some comments, critiques? Sure. So sweet, this is by Lindsay, one of our previous mm -hmm. winners. I believe, so it's an animation. Let me play it. Okay. Oh, just very simple. Is it two frame? Yeah, it seems like it. Cool, cool. Uh, it's hard to, because like it's not repeating, so I'm like. Oh. I know. <laughs> Is there movement? I can't tell. Let's just judge it as a still image. As a still image, I like it a lot. I think you can bring out a little bit more green in the rims of the glasses. Uh, and maybe do like a highlight on them. Yeah, green. that'd be cool. That would look really nice. Especially in the animation, like mm -hmm. flashing across. Yeah, nice job, Lindsay. Cool, cool. Always love to see animation, like I've said. And look, oh, wow. another <laughs> animation. So look away if you're sensitive to flashing lights. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is a really long one. Cool. Nice. So it goes all the way from this to finish. Let's see how it works. Bloop. Boop, boop. <laughs> nice, I like, it's like the story. A loading screen. It is like a loading screen for sure. Really nice. And mm -hmm. only three colors, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. Very yeah. cool. Any thoughts? Um in the large gear on the left, I feel like you're using just a few too many circles right here. And oh. I kinda like it's a little confusing. Gotcha. But other than that, it's really nice. I see what you mean. Nice job, Claire. This is from Andre. Ooh, wow. Andre has been submitting really awesome kind of cartoony illustrations all week. Super cool to see these. Mm -hmm. Very nice rogue. 
<laughs> Coming to stab ya. Watch out. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's definitely movement in this. Yeah. Uh, I really like the composition of it, mm -hmm. and I like the stance. It really feels like he's balancing there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can really feel the weight on his legs. Yeah. So that's really good. Um, I would maybe use a little bit more of the line art color too. Oh, okay. Maybe simplify some parts too. Because I feel like there's a little bit of scratchiness here and there, like right. uh, in the cape and on the legs that you can simplify. But it's looking really good. Yeah, nice job, Andre. This is by Joe Cook. Ooh. Is it a rocket or a bottle? Or? I don't know. <laughs> both? Could be both. Yeah, let's Flying see. champagne. No <laughs> description. Yeah, it's getting popped. Popped cool. off. Nice. Uh, maybe bring in a little bit of the white in the, the uh, fire? Mm, I want to mm -hmm. say Jeff Gilbert. <laughs> no, I think that's a great idea. It does look a little bit flat down here compared to all of this visual information that's happening up there. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Joe, from United Kingdom. This is Eduardo. Oh. This is some crazy, like, glitchy artwork. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, hmm. I like the shapes they're using for the trees. I uh, like. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. It's a oh, it's a park bench. Okay. Yeah, cool. it's like a little road or pathway. Mm -hmm. I think maybe the the use of this bluish color for the sun might be a little confusing. Mm -hmm. I would maybe use white. Yeah, why not? Yeah. And I think maybe this texture is a little distracting too. It's not as stark anywhere else as it is here across the mm. entire sky. It's maybe something to think about. But nice job, Eduardo. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's Joe's again. Get that close. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe done in a uh, Photoshop sketch. This is by Jan Eric, one of our longtime fans. Mm -hmm. Not fan, viewer, friend. <laughs> I like how loose the uh, the sailboats are. Yeah. It feels really painterly. And I like just a little bit of detail of like the waves splashing. Mm -hmm. It feels like a really rough sea. And I think it's because it's not just a straight line. It's just almost straight. Yep. There's really so much nice. movement throughout this entire thing. Really mm -hmm. nice job, Jan Eric. And good composition too. Yeah. Right, there's definitely a hierarchy. You got the small, medium, and large, mm -hmm. but they're not equally spaced. And it leads your eye up into the sky. Nice job. Ooh. This one's really nice. This is by Julie. I believe she won yesterday or the day before. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of like The Great Gatsby, like a book cover. <laughs> Driving in a 1920s. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's out west because I'm envisioning like a pickup truck. Oh, like okay. a really old one. Yeah. But really cool. Mm -hmm. I love this style. Mm -hmm. Definitely very vintage. And it looks like it could have been hand done. Yeah, it looks almost like a chalk. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Really nice work, Julie. Mm -hmm. This is Ooh, by man. Lauren E. Yeah. Very tranquil. Very zen. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, this is looking good. Uh, I would maybe add some details in the foreground, like mm. maybe a like couple lines of grass. Yeah. Just to just to mimic Pinky. the uh, lines of the ocean up top. Right. So everything else is pretty shape oriented mm -hmm. and then there are these lines you don't really see lines anywhere else except for right there drop set shadow i guess could be a visual line but i agree whoa that's by patricia <laughs> he loves Whole me story here. he loves me not he loves me this is really cool almost like collage like i like the overlay of the flowers on mm -hmm. top of her hands i just wish it was a little bit more clear but a really unique idea. Yeah, I think since they are on top, it'd be better to use a blend mode that's more like overlay mm -hmm. or um, screen. This looks like it might be multiply. But really cool. I love the collage layered on top feeling. Ooh. Movement. <laughs> Ooh, nice like little yarn texture. Really texture cool. Here too. Um, let's see. I don't know what I would add to this one. Really nice. And I love that this is, the hair is like a very large simplified shape, but within it, you've detailed it and told us what exactly is going on. Mm -hmm. I love these little lines for the fingers. 
It's super yeah. simple. I like that the shoes are red, kind of ties it back into the hair. Yeah. That's really good. Nice good use choices. of all the colors. Mm -hmm. Very nice job. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, it's a little face being blown <laughs> by the wind. I wonder if this is by the same person who did the pug, the yellow pug yesterday. Is that you? <laughs> this looks like a similar style. Let's see. What do you think? It was hard to see what it was at first. Oh, okay. Uh, I think if you brighten up the face a little bit, mm -hmm. it would read better and maybe play a little bit with the line weight at, towards the bottom. That's what I was going to say. So you think that it should be thinner or thicker? Thinner at the bottom. Yep. Give it a little bit more of a round shape. Yeah. And bring the eye a little bit more back to the face. Right. I agree just with the line weight in general. Since this hair is moving so gracefully, you could work with some really like thin to much thicker to way thin. Mm -hmm. Nice grace to this piece. All right, we've got Whoa. Amanda Steiner. Look away if you're sensitive to flashing lights. <laughs> what you think? It's really cool. Yeah, it is cool. Very experimental. I feel like this is something that you would put up in like a dance club. Yeah, like on a screen and you're like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> Makes me feel all kinds of ways. Good choices on the colors, on how you're using them on the mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice job, Amanda. I'm going to cool. tab away just so nobody gets <laughs> sick. But that's really cool, jarring illustration. So I'm going to kind of squish this group down a little bit and I'll offer Mark maybe a top five or top ten to choose the winner. The winner of the challenge will win a free year of Creative Cloud. And we're also just thankful that you've all submitted. This is really awesome. We love to see you all grow as artists and share your processes. Processes. Julie loves the running girl with the yarn sweater. Yeah, that was awesome. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Joel says, this makes me hungry. What part <laughs> of it, Joel? And we have about a little more than 10 minutes left here with Mark. It is the last stream of the week. So please chat. If you have any more lingering questions, be sure to ask them. I'm sure Mark would be happy to answer questions that you shoot his way on Instagram or Twitter or what have you, but he's here. He's live right now. Yeah. Might as well ask. I love getting questions on Twitter or Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm not too active on Instagram socially, but Twitter, if I get a question, I'm going to answer. There you go. No matter what. <laughs> <laughs> Opening up a can of worms. Joel says, we thank you for providing such a valuable resource to us. Joel, thanks for being here. That's awesome. This is really tough. So what are you doing now? Just adding some leaves. Kind of. Oh, like the, they fell. Yeah. Love that. Give the background just a little bit of something to lead the eye around. Mm -hmm. Just give it some kind of detail. Cool. I feel like this area is a little bit lost. I agree. Nice catch. And I group this together. Group all these clouds together. Not clouds. Steam. <laughs> yeah. Little clouds. We rarely get a uh, submission from Jan Eric, that, that sailboat painting. So thank you so much for submitting, Jan Eric. Showing us your cool art skills. He I'm says. a little bit better. Yeah. I agree. Did you shorten the chimney a little bit or cover? I shortened it a little bit, uh, moved it around, and I got these uh, steam clouds. Oh gosh. How do oh I gosh. Uh, I covered it up, covered up the details of the tree. Mm -hmm. That way they're not kind of fighting. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hard decision to make. You have something that's really beautifully detailed. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I don't need to show it because it's shown somewhere else. You have other trees. But it's hard to say no to yourself. <laughs> Jan Eric says, we have such fun doing all of these challenges. So many great submissions by everyone. Totally agree. This has been my favorite challenge day so far this week. Mm -hmm. Chat, you got any ideas of things that can be added? 
What is the um, orange thing on the front of the coffee pot? Is that a... Like oh, a... it's going to be the, the sign. Oh, okay, so it's not done yet. Yeah, I was just going to add like little scribbles. Uh, I don't like using too much typography unless yeah. I absolutely need to. Mm, why is that? Because uh, it's like a big choice to do typography, I feel like. Yeah. You yeah. gotta really know what you're doing, and if you're gonna use type, then it's gotta be like, it has to work with the illustration. Yeah, it has to be set well. It's mm -hmm. very easy to tell when type is done poorly. Very true. <laughs> so if you're not comfortable, if you're not trained in the ways of setting type, it might be good to stay away from it or just learn. Learn more about it or go the way of the scribble. Hmm. Luis says adding something that's alive might be interesting. Like a little tiny creature or animal person. That would be cool. Yeah, to kind of give a little bit of size representation or life to the scene. Megan says a bunny would be cute in the grass. Sorry about that, I had to use uh, my transform tool. I accidentally hit this button here, which oh. <laughs> adjusts everything. Uh -oh. So if I move over here in the center, everything's nice and dandy. There you go. Oh, we could name his coffee shop. Let's see, chat, what do you think? The, the steam engine. <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> Munir is wondering, and hi Munir, by the way, uh, about your sketching process. And you said that you don't really sketch, right? Not really. Only with your loot project, you said you sketched a little bit? Only a little bit, and it's only when I'm not near the computer and I'm like, oh, I have this idea, would this work? And I just draw it out real yeah. quick, thumbnail it. That's probably about as far as it gets, like a thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And then you jump in and do the finished piece. All right, maybe we can look at these top options, pick a winner, and then right. we'll let you kind of wrap up and share what you've done for the last couple days. Because we're almost cool. done, peeps. <laughs> so these are the top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think, uh, right. options for the challenge. The winner of the challenge will win a free year of Creative Cloud, but you're all winners for creating this awesome art under such a deadline. <laughs> so these are the cool. top options so far. And the challenge was movement, so we really want to focus on which one of these pieces really shouts movement to us and uses the um, limited color palette well. Mm -hmm. And we can do like a top three and pick from there if you'd like. Now let's do a top three. Okay, let me know which ones are your top. Okay. Um, let's see. This one? Geisha? Yep. Alrighty, there she goes. This one. This one? Yeah. Skateboarding Granny. Mm. Mm, yeah, this one. Cool. Yeah. So these are the top three options. Very different, which is awesome to see. Mm -hmm. So what? how do these scream movement to you? This one has that visual representation within the lines. Mm -hmm body language. Yeah, this one feels like this person's really pushing against the yeah. wind. You can really feel it, you know? Mm -hmm. This one feels like it's a, just a snapshot. Like, yeah. I know what's gonna happen, but this is like this cool little moment in mm -hmm. time. Yeah, she's at like the apex of her jump. She's just floating there and it got captured. Mm -hmm. Good job, Tarek. And this one feels really graceful and mm -hmm. kind of like the slow spin, and I can almost feel it too. Yeah, right, and even this movement of these cherry blossoms in the background lead your eye. Mm -hmm. The clouds also do. There's a slight kind of swirl around here. Really nice job, Pamela. Mm -hmm. So these are the top three options, and one will be the ultimate winner. Mm. Oh, this is a really tough decision. Yeah, it is. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna go with this one. This one? Yeah. <laughs> cool, so this is one out over 
all. This is the winner of the challenge. Congratulations, you are the winner of the free year of Creative Cloud. I don't see your name on the submission, so maybe Adobe Live team can let us know in the chat. Or if you're still in the chat, let us know if this is yours. Uh, we'd love to say thank you for submitting. And Adobe Live team will be in contact with you over your Behance messages. So it's in chat. It is Aldrich Gustavo. What oh. a cool name, Gustavo. So congratulations, you are the winner. This is a really amazing piece, and I haven't seen your name in chat before, so thanks for being here. We'll hop back over to Mark's computer, and maybe you can walk through really quickly how you built this today. Not so, too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so for this one, I originally had the idea of doing like a coffee shop, kind of a little beverage place. Yeah. So I wanted to play with something really fun, and I thought, let me just make the entire rooftop a big coffee t pot. Yeah. Kind of make it into like this weird focal point. And I want to use some San Francisco architecture. So I use these bay windows, a lot of brick. Mm -hmm. And so I started building from the top down. Uh, that way I wouldn't have to worry like if the bottom layers were the right shape or if I would cover it up or oh, anything like that. Oh, gotcha. So working top down is really nice for mm -hmm. that. I didn't even realize that you did that. That's a really yeah. cool tip. <laughs> nice. And from there, I worked on the foreground, kind of using similar colors from the top here. Yeah. So like this concrete is the same as this blue here. Uh, and then from there, I just kind of expanded using different details and tried to keep like almost using like a stamp. So like mm -hmm. the flower shape is the same, just kind of dot them throughout. Same with the, the bushes and the trees. Mm -hmm. And using like just really simple language. Yeah, and even super simple written language on the sign is just <laughs> a dash and another dash. It could be anything you want it to be. Sure, and I don't know if we came up with a name in chat. What were you thinking for the, the name of the coffee shop chat? Let us know. Um, I was going to say, I really liked how you did stamp the flowers and the leaves, and you also did something similar with the bricks, mm -hmm. but you just rotated it to and give it a little bit. Yeah, it gives it a little bit more play. Mm -hmm. A little bit more play. Mm -hmm. I like that. And also, like we talked about earlier, it just gives you the idea, it's like shorthand, that this is all brick, this is what it looks like, but this is all you need to see. Mm -hmm. Diego says, awesome work. I really fell in love with your workflow, Mark. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Joel says above ground is a good name. Mm. I think that's cool. Oh, I get it. Ground, oh, off ground. So. I didn't get it at first. <laughs> Thicker good than pun. me, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Marcachino, that could be the name. Marcachino's <laughs> Coffee Shop. Very um, cool. Megan is wondering again about the shade on the table. Mm -hmm. Why does one have shade and the others do not? Uh, I kind of wanted to just infer a little bit of like a light source coming from the left. Mm -hmm. So I used a little bit more shade on the fence area over here on the left, on uh, the right. <laughs> it's on the right. Yes. <laughs> They're left. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So I kind of just a little bit of a subtle hint that the sun is almost up top, but to the left. Gotcha. Cool. And so if people in chat want to stay in touch with you after the stream is over, which it's finishing in about two minutes, uh, what is the best way for them to contact you or follow your work? I would say Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm Mark Usmiani Art on both. Perfect. It's pretty easy to find. He has a cool little avatar with him wearing a hat. Mm -hmm. It's a cool little image. Danielle says it looks like cotton candy, maybe cotton candy coffee shop. Ooh. Ooh someone said perks and That'd recreation. Be a good <laughs> Possibly. We could make it happen. <laughs> Uh, thank you everyone in chat for being here. We really appreciate the support. Make sure that you stick around next week. We are going to be focusing on mobile illustration. I'll be back hosting and we'll have a bunch of awesome artists, including Kyle T. Webster. We've got Mark Crilly uh, and just awesome cross-platform workflows are going to be happening. More challenges and also some more portfolio reviews, I believe. So if you missed out on that today, look forward to that next week. Ryan, thank you for being here. Noelle, thank you for being here. Uh, stick around next week and watch the replays over the weekend on the YouTube Creative Cloud channel. Thanks everyone for being here. Goodbye. See ya.